when you look at masterpieces, you see weather. Annunciations, depositions, expulsions, visitations, these feel incredibly weak. So many great paintings, so much greatness, seems just a tangle of body parts ever more skillfully arranged. The Renaissance is full of people standing around. By the Baroque, they're writhing around, like a movie reel switched from an art film to a thriller. When you stood in the chapel at Santa Maria Novella, in front of the restored frescoes, you stared right past all the martyrdom and wailing in attendance. Cheat sheets for churchgoers who couldn't read and couldn't understand the Latin mass. And took in the background clouds. Odd clouds. Clouds that look like the balled up packaging of a cheap cloud toy discarded behind a dumpster. photographer and have spent much of every day drifting into the unfamiliar. When you're waiting for a train, you find yourself waking up into the same station you didn't know you were sleeping. The camera is an amnesiac, constantly, comically, and tragically looking at a new world. And its amnesia is complete. On the golf course, all you see is weather. The sky is dark, a darker tone than the very green barrier, if this were printed in black and white. There has been an afternoon storm in the sky. Down at the bottom of the hill, and over the 17th green, a crowd begins climbing toward you. They are scrambling mass as far from a Sunday foursome as you can figure, all following some fellow, a tour guide, a point person, a celebrity who is charging up the fairway. They hike up awkwardly, smaller in stature, and gravitationally drawn to his huge suit and elephantine stride. With every assured step of his, you come a little more unknown. Who is this? Why are they here? 
is this a media event? The Sizzler incident taught you that the media is an amniotic membrane you can push through. On one side fed through a tube, on the other, screaming for your own air. When you're walking in the city and the cameras come on, the correspondents breathe deep. The boom men raise their arms like acid bombs. You feel so great to be on the secular side of the camera with no one reporting from anywhere. They get closer. They are people following someone up a hill on a dark summer day. As they trudge up the wet grass, breathing harder, their urgency slackens, and with it the incandescence of their leader. He's just as willful, his gait unchanged, but his followers' lungs ache. Soon you see him better than they do. On one side of the membrane, he's a large black man in a shark skin suit. No hat, damp loafers. On the other, he's Charles Minky. Blue black sky stretches away to the distant commerce strip, and Charles Mingus walks toward you, his mouth sagging with a cigarette tip. Celebrity is nothing but the plain and the familiar. Your mother is no one special. You just recognize her in the crowd, above the bassinet, in those Renaissance paintings of celebrity virgins, their entourages standing around. Charles Mingus is here. Familiar from album covers and store displays, and all else is wilderness. As he reaches you, he takes a hard left and lies down on his back on the ladies' seat. about finding in the weeds when you're out shooting in the world doesn't show up. The abandoned world in an alley. The Kmart bursting into flames. Photographers dream in content. The camera is a metal roll film reflex hanging from your neck with enough real weight to remind you that you have a skeleton. You raise it to your eye and are immediately punished for it. The meter's broken. You can't find the f-stops. The focus ring feels unaligned and makes a gritty sound when it twists. You can get infinity in, but not the foreground. You press the shutter 
and it responds with the saddest sound any mechanical thing can make. Let it drop. A broken camera is nothing but a cobblestone. My tears and a sword, but only because it can strike from a distance. Before you, a Maxfield Parish painting has been rolled in on flats. When he takes a drag, the tip of his cigarette is the exact orange of the sunset tinge. What a picture. Pulitzers, Guggenheims, Prix de Rome, NYFAs, NEAs, Louis Cumber Tiffany's, Turner's, Nobel's, MacArthur's pile up before you. The picture is that good. A masterpiece. Maybe all you've suffered for. That badly weighted backpack of failure you keep trying to force into the overhead compartment. The unfinanced expeditioning. The sense that art has become the hair-lipped cousin of the entertainment industry. 